Part two, we're going to look at some algebraic vectors. Now, as we've known from earlier, we can apply most all our rules to the same from algebra, like right here, to vectors, like vector v. This is saying take v, which is 4 minus ne 1 negative 4, add that to twice w. And we can do this in our head. That's negative 6 and negative 12. And if I add them together, we get negative 5, negative 16. Even B. It says I'm looking for magnitude, but we have to use the order of operations. I have to take negative V plus W. So to do that, <coughs> negative V, change your signs, negative 1, 4, plus W. Negative 3, negative 6. Add them together, negative 4, negative 2. So once I get my vector, now we can find magnitude. Now, we have a rule for magnitude. If you don't remember it, I never remember it. I can draw it. Negative 4, negative 2. It's our right triangle. Ah! So it's going to be the, so the magnitude of our vector is going to equal the square root of, ah, 4 squared, which is 16, plus 2 squared, which is 4. We get the square root of 20. And for fun, find the direction also on your own. That involves tangent. I would practice this one because on your quiz, big on your quiz, tangent. All right, now, the next one we're going to take a look at is finding K. Remember what I told you guys about vectors? Vectors are like slope. So if they're like slope, we can find parallel and perpendicular vectors. I want these two vectors to be first parallel. Well, if they're parallel, they have to have the same slope. So remember what a vector is. A vector is the change in x over the change in y. Well, what is slope? The change in y over the change in x. See? Ta-da! So what I'm going to do for my first vector, if I want them parallel, for my first vector, 3, 2, there's my delta x, there's my delta y, if I write this as a slope, it's going to equal 2, 3. 2 over 3. I do the same thing for this one. 5k as a slope, it becomes k over 5. Well, if they're parallel, what has to be true? So let's go and take a look here. So if they're parallel, they must equal. 2 over 3 equals k over 5. Cross multiply, you wind up with k equals 10 over 3. What about perpendicular? Well, if they're going to be perpendicular, if my original slope is 2 thirds, the perpendicular slope, right? The perpendicular slope is we said it was the opposite reciprocal. So for the second one, <coughs> the k, the one with the k, I'm going to flip it and make it negative. And I do the same thing. k equals <coughs> negative 15 over 2. And you can verify that cross multiplication right there. And that's how we get parallel perpendicular. Easy. I would recommend you try this one a couple of times, okay, before you move on to the next one, because the rest are pretty easy well, number to do. three. We're given the AB. Now, this is a change, okay? It's how much it changed by. AB starts at A, goes to B, and it changed by 5 and 3. We're starting at A. So if I know where A is, here's A. It's at some point 2, 5. We kind of think of it like that. And it's changing by 2, by 5, 3. So remember what that's basically telling us. This is telling us that... We're changing it by 5 in the x direction. So our change in x is 5. Our change in, remember this is point A, in B is 3. So it's change in y, so it's 3. So our delta y is 3. And I'm heading up here towards B. So we can find that resultant vector. So where does B wind up? Well, take a look. If I'm starting at 5 and I add 2, I'm going to get 7. If my Y value is originally 5, but I'm adding 3 to it, we wind up at 8. 
Now, we can think about this algebraically as well. It's a little bit tougher to do. If I want to go from A to B, it's gonna, I'm starting at A. It's where I start. Plus, what am I going to change, right? And that's going to put me at B. Well, I start at A. My change is this A, B. And that's going to put me to B. So solving this, starting at A, we get 2, 5, plus AB, which is 5, 3, and that's going to equal B. I don't know what B is, so I'll call it XY. And so what's XY going to equal? Adam, 7, 8. And there's our vector B. That's what we wound up at. Easy to do. All right, now for number four, we're talking about component parts. A little bit tougher to do, okay? It says find the coordinates of A if A is here and B is at 7, 16. B is two-thirds of the way. Well, if you think of this in terms of vectors, it's a lot easier to do. Here's A. It's at negative 2, 4. Here's B. I've not drawn the scale. It's at 7, 16. There's my magnitude. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to think of this in terms of vectors. What's my change in x? What's my change in y? Well, my change in x, I'm starting at negative 2, ending at 7. That goes 9 units. What's my change in y? Well, my change in y, I, ended, I started at 4, I went up at 16. That's 12. So what this gives me is vector a B. That gives us vector A, B. So vector A, B is 9, 12. Okay? Now, the next thing we have to do is, I want to, I, that's the total distance. We want two-thirds of this. So I'm going to take two-thirds of 9, 12. And that's not that bad to do. 18 over 3 is 6. 24 over 3 is 8. So what that's telling me to do is now what I'm going to do in the x direction from where I started, I need to go 6 units, and in the y direction, I have to go 8 units. So remember, I'm starting at where? Negative 2, 4. I'm going to add to that my change. That's my change problem. I'm going to add to that 6, 8. And that's going to give us 4, 12. And that will point will be 2 thirds of the way. So basically it's 2 thirds of the way here. Ready? What's 2 thirds of 9? We said was 6. What's 2 thirds of 12? We said that was 8. So how far over? 6 over puts me at 4. 8 up puts us at 12. And that will put us at the point 4, 12. 2 thirds of the way. All right. Very easy to do. All right, um, let's take a look here at part A. I want to take a look at part A and let you guys solve one of these. This is a solving a vector equation. These are kind of fun to do, very easy. I'm looking for x, y. Just like any other equation, algebraically, I have to subtract the vector 3, 4 from both sides. Cancels. I get vector x, y equals subtract. 4 minus 3 is 1. Negative 2 minus 4, negative 6. And there is our vector. So let's try this one. This one's a little bit tougher to do. Be careful. At negative 3, we've got to distribute. So I'm going to kind of distribute that here. I get, oh, don't distribute, sorry. Negative 5 minus 3. Ah, sorry. Let's subtract the 2, negative 5 first from both sides, just like in algebra. Minus 2, negative 5. We get negative 3, x, y equals, and if I subtract here, negative 2 minus 2, we get negative 4. 7 minus the negative 5 becomes positive 12. And now am I going to divide by, yeah, just divide by everything by negative 3. Vector x, y, we get 4 thirds and negative 4. And there's our vector. Very easy to do. All right. Part 6, a review for us. We want to write this in component form, okay? So remember, to get this one, they give me 
a distance, they gave me the magnitude, and they gave me the angle. So remember, for x, it's the magnitude times the cosine of the angle. For y, it's the magnitude times the sine of the angle. Now, on your quiz tomorrow, on Tuesday, the, you're going to have to know. I'm going to give you known ones. You, okay, I'm not going to give you a calculator, so you have to know those. So to get x, it's going to be 2 cosine 75, and to get y, it's 2 sine 75. And you just type those in your calculator. Make sure you're in the right mode. Degree. When life turns up to heat, turn on degree. Degree. So I'm going to type in 2 cosine 75, 2 cosine 75, and I want 2 sine 75. So there's my two values, 0.518, 1.932. So I go 0.518, 1.932. And I want them in component form, 0 0.518, 1.932. Now, let's write these in the linear form, too. Remember, I had to correct this. We had to correct this. The linear form, I used to call it standard uniform. I got mixed up there, so sorry. This becomes 0 0.518i plus 1.932j. And there's our linear form of the vector. All right. Um, <clears throat> make sure you go over these if you need to, okay? We'll answer some questions on Monday, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye.